Hey guys, welcome to uh, what's possibly going to be my last Dark Souls playthrough series, uh, at least in the near future. I'm sure this summer when the PC edition comes out, I'll probably do at least one more playthrough to include the new areas uh, and do some sort of challenge at low levels or something like that. Uh, but until then, this is probably going to be it. Uh, I had a few more ideas I would like to have done. I had a few more playthroughs I thought would have been fun to do. I wanted to do a tips and tricks series. Uh, I just don't think I had the time to do it. So instead of not doing any of it, I figured I would make one last playthrough and try to do as much of it as I could. Uh, I couldn't come up with a really good title for this because it's yeah, it's kind of got a few things going on in it. So I'll spend a couple minutes and try to explain what's, uh, what the purpose of the playthrough is. Uh, one of my first video series I did at the very beginning uh, of my uh, video making, I should say, uh, was a little two-part series called How to Make Your Character Strong Before the Taurus Demon. Uh, it wasn't very thorough, but it was just a quick little half-hour video of uh, how to get a few items for our new players so that they could get into the Berg and possibly even into the Parish without getting murdered by uh, low-level invaders, uh, especially the twinked ones. Uh, but it wasn't very thorough, uh, and I really thought I wanted to go back and kind of explore that a little bit more, but take it to the extreme. Uh, the Taurus Demon was actually a bad measurement system because you never have to beat the Taurus Demon to beat the game. So basically, this is going to be more along the lines of how far can I get in the game, how strong can I make my character before I ever take on the gargoyles. Uh, part of that reason is, with a bottomless box glitch, and now there's a duping glitch out there, uh, I think really good skilled players get a bad name, because it's automatically assumed that if you're invading at lower levels and you have good gear, that you're automatically some twink that basically didn't earn any of it. Uh, but people that have been around for a long time know that that's just not true. Uh, so I just kind of wanted to explore that and see how far I could get. Just so people, I mean, I, even I was accused of that. I have a couple low-level uh, PvP videos where people have been accusing me of being a twink and all that. I really don't want to get into all that during this video. But I will say I just want to show people that are non-believers just what all you can do uh, without relying on any sort of glitches or cheating. Um, so that's the first part of the video. Um, I think once I finally get to the point where I've exhausted all possibilities, I will probably take on the gargoyles and then probably just finish up the playthrough. We'll have to see. Um, along the way during this playthrough, I will be showing any tips and tricks that I've come up with, shortcuts. Uh, I'll say in the beginning, not all of them are my actual idea or something I discovered. Uh, I'm just going to pretty much put anything I know about. Um, and that'll be a good portion of the video as well. I'll, that's why I'm adding commentary specifically, so that I can explain every little thing I do, uh, every little shortcut I take. Uh, the only other thing is I'm not really going to limit myself in any specific way. Uh, I've done the low-level challenge to death. I've done the naked challenge, no shield, uh, no elemental weapon. I've kind of already proved all I need to prove to myself. So this time I just want to have a little bit of fun. Uh, the only real limit I'm going to put on myself is that I'm not going to really farm any uh, souls or any gear. I mean, the way I see it, I'm going to get what drops and use it and that's it. I'm not going to spend any time trying to farm anything specific. So even though I won't actually allow myself to farm, uh, I will still be getting all of the embers. Uh, even though I won't use them, the point would be to show that anybody who was interested in using them could have access to them. Uh, so with all that said, uh, we're about to get started here. Uh, what you just seen me do is exactly the same as almost every playthrough I've ever done. I always stop and get the uh, Homer Bones because they come in really handy early on for suicide runs. Uh, I didn't really pick up a couple of the other items because I just won't use them. I mean, there's a couple areas in this game everyone really knows about already. I mean, there's no point in me doing a graveyard run because we all know that the uh, Zweehander is there, the binoculars, uh, the wing spear, and all that jazz. So, uh, with that said, I also won't be grabbing every single uh, item in the game. Uh, there's some treasure that's just not worth getting no matter what. Uh, wooden shield comes to mind, the sorcerer set. Uh, there's quite a few things that I probably won't bother getting, but I will focus on getting anything that's somewhat important. Uh, so as you can see now, uh, I'm heading back to the graveyard, except I am not actually going to do the graveyard run. I'm actually heading down to the catacombs first. I think everyone's heard that Pinwheel is the easy boss to take out in the beginning. Uh, but uh, I don't think anyone's ever actually done it on video yet <laughs> as the first boss. Uh, but that's not really the only reason I'm going down here. 
I'm actually coming down here for another reason. Pinwheel is just kind of a side trip. I figure since I was down here, it'd be easy to take him out. Uh, but anyway, you'll notice I'm wearing a helmet. That's the only piece of the warrior set that actually has any poise. Uh, so if you're going to run around naked like this, it's good to have at least uh, a couple poise. Because if not, anything that touches you pretty much automatically stuns you. Uh, so at least this is somewhat a protection. Uh, you can see I'm just running by everything. Uh, especially this guy. My goal is to run up and hit that button as quick as I can because uh, when you're doing any of that animation where you're actually sliding lovers or anything, you are basically invincible for a short time. So you can use that to your advantage anytime you're doing any sort of suicide run involving a lever or uh, buttons or anything like that. Just running by these guys. Uh, this is probably going to be one of the few suicide runs I actually do. Uh, I will be killing and exploring a lot more areas than you guys have seen me do in any of my other videos. I think that's been one of the major complaints. Even on the Sorcerer playthrough where I actually did more, people still were saying they wanted to see me actually go through more of the game. So other than this initial uh, suicide run that you're going to see me do, which is not really suicide, but you get the point, uh, I will definitely be going through more er uh, areas more thoroughly than I did before. So um, this guy's a little bit dangerous to go through at a low level. Uh, once you get uh, used to timing his dodges, it's not so bad. And if you saw what I just grabbed, then you realize where I'm going. I noticed how the skeleton couldn't hit me. Uh, apparently, normal enemies can't hit you when you're in the coffin. However, the very big guy can. Uh, it's kind of strange. Sometimes he acts like he doesn't know you're there, but he'll walk by and get some last-second attack on you. And for some reason, his attacks will still hit, and it will kill you in one hit. Uh, so, thankfully, this time it didn't happen. I've done this run a few times, kind of perfecting it to make sure that I had a good chance of doing it. But there's always a risk of that guy hitting you. So anyone who's done this before obviously knows I'm going in here to get the Gravelord Sword. Uh, you saw me raise my strength to 16. I already have 13 dexterity, which is the minimum requirements to two-hand the sword. But what I'm going to do here is a little bit of a, a trick. Anybody who's familiar with the kiln, uh, the kiln glitch will probably recognize what I'm doing. So I'm actually considered that I'm in the Tomb of Giants right now. So I'm going to go to Bonfire, and then once I see the Dark Souls loading screen that I'm not saving anymore, I'm going to quit out the game. I bypassed all the logos and stuff, but basically what happens is I get brought back in at the beginning of the Tomb of Giants, which is actually past Pinwheel. Uh, you don't have to do this. In fact, if you're worried about screwing up your game save, I would say you probably shouldn't. But I just thought it was a cool trick I kind of figured out. So here's Pinwheel, uh, naked with a Gravelord sword. And you'll see he still isn't really all that tough. He can kill you if you get unlucky or you miss a few hits and he, you know, one or two of those magic attacks get you. But thankfully I didn't make a fool out of myself and was able to take him out. Uh, but going back to the kill and glitch thing, I think... Uh, what happens is every area in the game has a safe area. It's, a, it's an area where the game will spit you anytime it loses track of where you're at. Uh, so Tomb of Giants, the safe area, happens to be the very beginning past Pinwheel. But because you're in Nito's lair when you get that sword, and because I homeward boned out and then quit out before it actually put me in a new area, it lost track of me and basically put me here. So it was a little bit of a fast forward. It definitely wasn't required. I was all of about one minute away from Pinwheel anyway once I reached the, uh, the coffin. But I thought it'd be cool to kind of show you guys some other little tricks that are possible. And it did allow me to get through Pinwheel backwards, so I actually started out a little bit closer to him. That way you don't have to run uh, all the way across the room to get to him. And it did allow me to bypass the bone wheel skeletons, which can be pretty nasty at low levels. Um, for anyone that wants to try that, don't blame me if you screw up your save. I've done this stuff many times with no trouble. Uh, the trick is basically never ever quit your game out like that when you see the little flame on the top right. That means you're in the process of auto saving. As long as that flame's not there, you're safe to do it. Anyway, you see me run through the Tomb of Giants, uh, taking on patches here. You're probably wondering why am I killing patches. Uh, basically because I have no use for any NPCs in this playthrough. Uh, what I want is the humanity. Uh, you'll see why a little bit later. I'm trying to stock up on as much humanity as I can get. Uh, I'm really not going to be buying any items specifically. I'm probably going to be using whatever gear I can find. 
Uh, so my goal here is going to be to get my humanity up to 10 as soon as possible. Um, since I can't beat the gargoyles, I can't get into Sin's Fortress, which means I can't get the gold serpent ring, nor can I get a symbol of avarice. So the only way to get my item discovery up is to get at least 10 humanity. And since there's a lot of early item games I want to get, i got to get it to 10 ASAP. And since I'm not farming anything, uh, the easiest way is to kill NPCs. So if you guys have any NPCs you like, you're probably not going to be happy because they're all pretty much going to die. Uh, but it's all part of the fun. You know, this is not a PvP character I'm in the process of making, so I don't really care about the NPCs. Besides New Game Plus, they all come back to life anyway. Um, these guys are a little bit tough to fight. As you can see, I'm being a little bit more timid than usual because they can kill you in one hit if you get hit and stun locked in that stupid uh, arm spinning move they have. I'm just trying to take him out carefully. Uh, I was talking too much, but if you noticed the room before where I killed Patches, there was a soul up on a little ramp that I didn't get, and there was a reason for that. It's just a white chunk, but what happens is when you get that, it triggers a bunch of these bone towers to spawn. And I really didn't want to deal with that many of them. I didn't want to risk it. Uh, for those that don't really want to take any more risks than I'm doing right now, you could simply homeward bone out of here right now. Uh, there's one more thing I wanted to get in since I'm already here, and I was fairly confident I was going to be able to get it. Um, you'll notice I picked up quite a few uh, souls. Well, first I got about 15,000 for taking out Pinwheel. Uh, then I picked up a couple of the, the large soul of a proud knight. And then there's one more soul I want to get. So basically, when I walk out of here, I'm going to have pretty close to 30,000, maybe a little bit more souls for about five minutes work. That's not too bad. Uh... Some of you guys that would take Pinwheel out, uh, Pinwheel out early may not want to go all the way into Tomb of Giants. Uh, I wanted to just to show that it could be done. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend it to someone unless they're really familiar with this. Um, even I got hit by that guy. Even though I've ran past him a ton of times, he still gets me once in a while. So there's one more thing in here I want. Now, people are a little bit braver than me or actually want to take this even more extreme. There are a couple more things you can get in here. I came specifically for that, but uh, since I'm already here, I probably could have went one more step and got the uh, Silver Serpent Ring. Uh, I decided I didn't really need it, I didn't really want it, so I didn't really care, uh, but it is possible. Uh, you'll notice I'm raising my Endurance. Basically I just feel Endurance is twice as more important than uh, Vitality. Raising your Vitality means you expect to get hit. Raising your Endurance means you're expecting to dodge and uh, do a lot more attacking and wear more armor. That's kind of the way I look at it. Uh, but seriously, having more vitality if you don't plan on getting hit a lot is kind of a waste. But uh, extra stamina and more equipment load is never really a waste. So to me, that's just kind of the way I look at the game. Uh, I didn't really say so before, but I'm going to do a melee only playthrough. I'm not going to cast any spells. I did that with my sorcery. Uh, I've never really been a big fan of faith, especially in PvE. So I'm going all out melee this time. So stamina is going to be my biggest thing. Uh, you saw Patriots had to deal with my wrath. Needed his uh, stamina. I'm sorry. <laughs> I needed his uh, humanity. Uh, this guy doesn't give anything but a thousand souls, but since he's in my way, I'm going to go ahead and take him out. I mean, my focus is getting as much as I can, souls included, early on, so. Might as well kill everything on the way. You'll notice uh, I can't two hand the weapon yet, uh, but it's easy to switch out to one handed for a parry and then switch back to two. Uh, it's tricky at first for the timing, but after you get used to it, it's not so bad. You just gotta remember not to try to swing your damn weapon uh, one-handed when you only have the strength for a two-handed swing. It'll pretty much get you killed. Uh, as you see, I'm popping humanity, so I'm not wasting too much time. This is a little speedrun trick. You'll see a lot of the speedrun guys do this. So I just happen to exactly have 10, if you noticed. I was able to work out how to get 10 early on. And like I said, there's a few items I plan on getting early on. At least I plan on trying to get. And the only way to maximize my chances were to get my uh, humanity up. And since farming is not going to be allowed, because it's just... Who wants to sit there and watch someone farm on a game? And I don't want you guys to have to take my uh, word for it that I just magically got 10. So I figured I'd just find a way to do it along the way. Uh, you know where I'm going down here, probably. Uh, I'm definitely not strong enough to be taken on uh, four kings yet, uh, but there's a firekeeper soul in here. Uh, and I'm not far enough in the game to where I don't have to worry about homeward boning to some other uh, place. 
This is probably the last time I'll be in Firelink for any length of time, so I figured now was the best time to do this. I don't really need it yet, but again, there's a lot of things I'm just going to do to show. And so one more run back down. Um, so now I've spent the first half of this video blabbing about random stuff, and now I can finally get caught up and talk more about what's going on. Uh, the Gravelord Sword probably won't last me very long. It's just a really good weapon to get early on. I don't like trying to take on some of the early NPCs and stuff with uh, with the crappy lower weapons. I didn't want to get the Drake Sword. Uh, the Zwee Hander actually works out pretty well for doing a lot of low-level stuff. Uh, but it's been kind of done to death. It's what I did on my previous uh, How to get strong before Taurus demon video So I want to do something a little bit different and it just kind of worked in as part of the plan on how to get stuff early I mean it took me what five minutes from the time I hit firelink to get a hold of the grave lord sword and starting out as a warrior uh, Basically made me only have to raise three levels to even use the damn thing So it's not the greatest weapon at higher levels, but at low levels. It's a beast and so now I'm going through uh, Valley of Drakes. Uh, if you guys have watched my Sorcerer playthrough, you've already seen me go through here before. Uh, except this time I'm going to take out the uh, Undead Dragon. Again, it gives me, what, I think 3,000 souls. And uh, just show people how to do it who may not have done it at low levels. Uh, it's kind of a long fight, so I'm going to try something new. Instead of just uh, warping forward, I'm actually just going to try to speed up the video here and see how that works out. That way you actually get to see it. It's just you don't have to sit there for two minutes and watch me do the same thing. If you look at the timing, it looks like I can probably run right back around the second time after he does his breath. Uh, but I've tried that before. And if you are do the timing just wrong, you're in the wrong place. Uh, when he begins his next round of breath, he'll actually smack you. And he's one of the very few things that could one-shot you early on. Yeah, it's kind of, I've always found that strange. Most bosses can't one-shot you, even if you have the lowest vitality. But this guy definitely can one-shot you. So I guess he doesn't, uh, he's not considered a boss, so there is no uh, percentage of damage. He, he must just deal like an absolute number. Anyway, with the magic of uh, Sony Vegas, I was able to get through that in about a third of the time. Uh, another soul. As you see, my souls are adding up again. Uh, even though I burned through all the other ones, I'm back up at 15 again, and I still have that big stack that I haven't used yet. Uh, you're wondering why I haven't used them? It's because I, uh, I'm waiting to see what this gamble is going to produce. <laughs> well, I should say the gamble of what weapon I'm going to get up here fairly soon. I don't want to invest any weapon skills until I know what weapon I'm going to use. Uh, so I'm waiting. I'm biding my time. I really don't need any special stats to get through here anyway. Uh, just the extra endurance helps me run longer, which is the most important. Uh, the vitality really didn't mean anything, as I explained. Pass these guys. Uh, this is a little tricky if you've never done it before. Not so much just getting past these guys, but what to do after you get up here. Because they don't lose aggro. Uh, if you're a little bit more timid than I am, then you could probably uh, just quit out the game, restart it, and then at least they won't know you're there. Uh, the other option is just to homeward bone back, but I'm trying to be as efficient as I can here, so I'm going to go balls out and I'm just going to jump off and hope for the best. And I can guarantee you that if you don't do the little roll trick when you land, you will die at that point. And that's another something I don't think I've ever mentioned before. If you notice, every time I jump, I always roll when I land. Uh, there's two reasons for that. Number one, it makes you, you recover faster. If you, if you jump from a high place and you don't roll, you actually get stuck in place for a, a couple seconds while you're recovering. The other thing is it actually reduces your damage from a, a fall. I'm not sure if everyone actually realizes that. There are falls you could do that would kill you if you didn't roll. Uh, and there are falls that will damage you if you don't roll. Uh, but if you roll, it actually nullifies it. I've seen it a few times. So if you don't already do it, I would suggest always rolling when you land. And if you're having trouble doing it, then just double tap the button when you get close to the ground. So at this point, I started late at night. I took a little bit of a break. You're going to see me quit out and then start up again the next morning. I didn't want to go through this next area half asleep. Uh, so I'm going to quit out, come right back in. So now I have my uh, 10 humanity, so I got my item rate as high as I can get it. And you can imagine what I'm hoping to get right here. 
Uh, without getting my humanity up, this was a big risk to kill this guy. In fact, there's a lot of stuff uh, you can get early on, but it relies on your uh, item discovery rate. And I just wanted to make sure I had enough humanity to do it early. And there I got it. That's what I was hoping for. Uh, thankfully, I was able to get it. I've actually never used that weapon too much before, but I knew it was pretty powerful for uh, PvE. And I also got my uh, Grass Crest Shield, which is one of my best friends here. <laughs> In almost all playthroughs that I'm able to use it, I do use it. Um, so, you're seeing me run towards the Hydra here, but I'm actually not going to kill the Hydra just yet. Um, the reason I'm kind of running in these different orders here, I'm trying to do everything as efficiently as I can. Uh, I'm not going to do everything in some specific order. I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants, but I'm trying to do it something in order that kind of makes sense. I don't want to run back and forth between areas like 10 or 15 times. Uh, so I'm trying to do everything in one swoop, and then once I finish the area, I'll be done with it. Uh, so since I'm not killing the Taurus Demon, I didn't really have any reason to run through the Berg. So I did want to get Havel's Ring, plus Havel gives you a pretty amount of souls. As you can see, I'm not having any trouble parrying uh, Havel here. If you didn't know he could be parried, well, you know now. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it unless you're really good at it, because if he hit me, I would pretty much be dead. But I'm pretty comfortable parrying most uh, enemies in this game. The other trick, you would see it in my other video I did, was uh, you can simply roll behind him and backstab him when he does his attacks, but since I don't think I've ever parried him on video, I figured it'd be a good time to do it. Take some time to put on some clothes here. Finally, I'm not running around fully naked. And you're probably wondering why I'm going up here. Uh, two reasons. One is because I normally wouldn't come through the Berg at all, uh, up until I'm ready to kill the Taurus Demon. But there's a Black Knight up here I want to kill, just to see if I could uh, get his drops. Uh, and the other thing is, there is a Crystal Lizard out here, and he has two things I need very much. Uh, this Crystal Lizard and the one in the Basin almost always drop a Twinkling Titanites. In fact, I don't know of a time where I haven't seen him drop it. It almost seems like it's a guaranteed thing. Uh, I can't verify that, but I'm guessing it's it's guaranteed. I always get two Twink Lake Titanites, and the second one is the one that's random. Sometimes I get nothing, sometimes I get chunks, sometimes it's large shards, it just depends. So uh, I just got my two Twinkling Shards, so now I already have a way to upgrade my uh, Black Knight Halberd. I'm going to go take out this other Black Knight real quick. Uh, even if he drops his sword, I'm, I probably wouldn't use it. Even though on paper they look like they do similar damage, the Black Knight Halberd is actually way more powerful. Now, I'm not sure if it's because uh, the scaling is a little bit better. I think the scaling is the same, but I think it might be because it just requires more strength to use, so you get more scaling out of it. Uh, I'm not sure, but I just know after playing with both of them that the Halberd is way more damaging. Not to mention, it's actually not that slow of a weapon to be honest, and it has really, really good range. So, it's apparently not very powerful for PvP. Uh, it kind of has a crappy moveset. It's really punishable because of its it's slow if you miss with it. But for uh, PvE, it's really powerful. And now I finally get to the point where I can uh, level up to hopefully use it. Now, you, through the miracle of Sony Vegas, again, you're going to see me going really fast through here. So, you don't have to see me take uh, two minutes to pop all my uh, souls here. But if you look down, you can see how many souls I got now. I mean, I'm only about a half hour into the game, and uh, I've already had probably 60,000 souls together in total. And I happen to have just enough for that Black Knight Halberd. If I would have spent one more point on Endurance uh, back at Firelink, I probably would have made it to where I would have had to get more souls to use this thing. So it kind of worked out pretty good. That wasn't planned. I, was, I kind of guesstimated. Thankfully, I, uh, I guesstimated it correct. And again, we're going to speed up through here. Uh, by the way, tell me, you guys, if, if this is actually a good idea or if you don't like it. Sometimes I just kind of warp, but uh, I figured that at least that way it was still one solid uh, length of video. It just made it go faster, so you can see that I'm not doing anything behind the scenes. Uh, time to take out the Hydra. Uh, kind of lazy in this fight. I really don't want to take out the Crystal Demons by themselves, even though I can kill them in two hits. I kind of like letting Hydra do it. Uh, it doesn't always go perfectly as planned as you see, but 
If you time it right, you can do it. You'll notice I'm going from uh, one-handed blocking, switching to two-handed after I block. And I got all these little crystal demon demons. You'll see I switch to two hand, take a head out, switch right back to one hand, block him. Switch that. Turn just in time for that guy. I'm kind of flirting with danger here. I've got two, three crystal uh, golems here. And then I did the unthinkable. I accidentally swung while I was swinging one hand. Thank God it didn't kill me. That would have been uh, stupid. I was hoping for the heads to take out a few more, but I guess they uh, crystal balls are more fun. But as you can see, this weapon is just destroying this hydra. One swing, one head. Pretty much every single time, guaranteed. Normally I wouldn't even kill this guy, to be honest with you, if I wasn't going to use magic. But as I said, I want to be really thorough, so we're going to go through it. Okay, at least I did it a lot quicker this time than I did with the uh, sorcerer. And as you guys know, this last guy can be a pain in the ass sometimes. Uh, thankfully I got lucky. I was able to get it on the second try. But you get a nice chunk of, shoal, uh, chunk of souls, you get the Dusk Crown Ring, you get a Dragon Scale, if any of that interests you. So, and you can see, he's not that hard to take out, uh, so it's worth a kill. Besides, if you want to use this shortcut ladder up here to enter the forest backwards, uh, then you pretty much have to take out the Hydra. Every time I try to make that run without taking him out, he kills me on the ladder. Uh, another little trick here. Even though you're in the water, if you, stay, if you run at about a 45 degree angle next to the land, it still considers you on the land a lot of the time, so you can kind of do a little bit of a fast run here. Uh, the other thing is this, this stupid uh, golden crystal golem. He never shows up until you reload the game. Either you have to go back to a bonfire and then run all the way back, or you just have to quit your game out. So obviously I'm going to go with uh, method number two, so much faster. And then all of a sudden he just shows up. Now with weak weapons, this guy is, is pretty tough to beat actually, especially if you don't have the uh, Rusted Iron Ring. But uh, with the Black Knight Halberd, he doesn't provide, uh, provide much of a challenge. That's a lot of damage for such a low level character. And I haven't even upgraded the Halberd yet. So here we go again, I'm speeding it up. God, you guys don't want to watch me run back and forth for five minutes because I have to make this run one more time. Uh, like I said, all NPCs are going to die. Uh, Dusk is no different. She doesn't even really give you anything, but since I really don't need any of her stuff, I just wanted to show uh, players that may be a little bit newer to the game uh, just what she sells and what actually saving her will do for you. I am dead. Okay. Thanks, Dusk. I so uh, that's pretty much the end of her. She's actually has less than what 382 hit points. She's actually weaker than I thought she'd be. Poor Dusk. Uh, but anyway, you have to come back over here one more time if you want to get her stuff. And this is pretty much going to be the end of the first video. Uh, next video, you're going to see me go into the forest and pretty much clear all that out and take on Sif. And then I'll move into other areas of the game. So uh, take it easy, guys.